I, I would like to send to the desk for entering into the record a letter I sent to Justice Sonia Sotomayor uh, day before yesterday. And the reason for that concern is our Supreme Court process has broken down. I want to read you some quotes uh, of the justice, and then I want to read you the answers that she gave to my queries during her hearing on the Judiciary Committee. And I think it's going to be plain to see that we have to change what we're doing on Supreme Court nominees. Previous quotes on Judge Sotomayor on foreign law, the use of foreign law to interpret the U.S. Constitution, which is forbidden under the Constitution, except in those international treaties where it's so directed under statute <clears throat> and treaty. Statement of Judge Sotomayor, to suggest to anyone that you can outlaw the use of foreign or international law is a sentiment that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding. What you would be asking American judges is to close their minds to good ideas. Nothing in the American legal system prevents us from considering the ideas. That's true. The international law and foreign law will be very important in the discussion of how we think about unsettled issues in our own legal system. It is my hope that judges everywhere will continue to do this. Within the American legal system, we're commanded to interpret our law in the best way we can. And that means looking to what other, any other, anyone has to say to see if it has pervasive value. Well, that's wrong. The Constitution defines what judges look at in considering their decisions. So I ask her the following questions during her confirmation hearing before the Judiciary Committee. Will you affirm to this committee and the American public that outside of where you are directed to do so through statute or through treaty, refrain from using foreign law and making the decisions that you make that affect this country and the opinions that you write or concur with? So to my oars response, I will not use foreign law to interpret the Constitution or American statutes. I will use American law, constitutional law, to interpret those laws, except in situations where American law directs a court to do otherwise. So you stand by it. This is my words. There is no authority for a Supreme Court justice to utilize foreign law in terms of making decisions based on the Constitution or our statutes. Unless the statute, and here's her response, unless the statute requires you or directs you to look at foreign law, the answer is no. So her statements before she comes before the committee are totally opposite of what she tells the committee and then what she's done since proves that her testimony before the committee was totally meaningless. On May 17th, Judge, Justice Sotomayor joined an opinion citing the judgment of other nations when interpreting the Eighth Amendment to prohibit sensing of a juvenile offender. The opinion states the following. Global consensus against the sensing practice in question provides support for our conclusion. Well, either she was dishonest with us in the committee, or she doesn't know what she's signing on to, which tells you that our process for interviewing and holding Supreme Court candidates is a failure. The opinion further states that the judgments of other nations in the international community and the climate of international opinion are not irrelevant to determining the acceptability of a particular punishment. That's a total violation of the U.S. Constitution and its statutes. It's a total negation of what she told the committee as she came through the committee's process. That's one of the reasons. I didn't believe her because I believed her earlier statements to be her true feeling. So what we have before the Judiciary Committee, and we have another nominee coming up now, is the ability for justice to say whatever we want to hear and then do whatever they want to do and ignore the U.S. Constitution as she did and her testimony before the committee. As journalist Stuart Taylor recently wrote in The Atlantic, the opinion was based, this opinion that she co-signed onto was based on little more than the personal policy preferences of the five majority justices. And it looked abroad for consensus that so plainly does not exist here and violates our own U.S. Constitution. So it didn't matter what she told the committee. She did exactly the opposite of what she told the committee as she signed on to this opinion. 
We're going to need more than promises from the next nominee. An acceptable Supreme Court nominee must have a demonstrated record of adhering to the Constitution and their judicial oath by strictly interpreting the Constitution according to our founders' intent, not international opinion or consensus. It has no role in the interpretation of our Constitution. Senators cannot simply accept pledges from Supreme Court nominees that they will not use foreign law when interpreting the U.S. Constitution. The nominee to come before it, Solicitor General nominee Kagan, wrote the following. There are some circumstances in which it may be proper for judges to consider foreign law sources in ruling on constitutional questions. Oh, really? Is that what our Constitution says? Is that what this candidate believes? Here's what she said. Now, what is she going to say before us in committee? That she won't? What value is that? If, in fact, she knows that to be the law, she admits that that's what the U.S. Constitution says, and as soon as she's affirmed, does exactly the opposite. The process has to be changed. We can no longer take it on faith. Because, in fact, the process under which, since Judge Bork actually spoke what he believed, since him, nobody has said what they believe. They've all chiseled on what they believe. They won't be accountable to what they believe. So we have to change that process. The other concerning thing about nominee Kagan is that when she went to Harvard, she made international law mandatory in terms of getting a degree out of law school at Harvard. But do you realize Harvard doesn't require its lawyers to take constitutional law? You can graduate from Harvard Law School and never have studied U.S. constitutional law. That tells you the trend that this country is going in, is that we're abandoning our Constitution and the very wisdom that gives us the freedom that we have today. I'll finish by saying a consideration of any judge in the future in terms of this senator is going to be borne out by what they've said before they got to the committee, not what they say to the committee, because we can no longer, as a body, trust what the nominees say at committee. With that, I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.